Welcome to Prepper Nation. I'm John. Thank you very much for being here and doing all the YouTube stuff. Truly appreciate it. So let's talk about threats and assets or threats versus assets, I guess you could say. And there, there are two ways to approach this conversation and they're wildly different. Okay. So if we're talking about threats versus assets in terms of people, that's a monster all its own. And that's a huge topic as well. Maybe we'll talk about that on another day, but uh, absolutely, you should know the people in your lives that are the threats versus the assets. But uh, this morning, what I want to do is I want I want to focus on paper maps and threats versus assets in your area. You know, the other topic, right? Because I think it's very important. It's not it's not often talked about in the prepping community uh, that I'm aware of. So. This is this involves taking a paper map, sitting down, looking at your immediate area, you know, the five or six neighborhoods around you, your region, your state, perhaps, or or even several states. If, uh, you know, if the crisis is bad enough, you may have to migrate because the truth is. If a crisis is bad enough, all right, you are going to be displaced. Uh, this is the one knock that I have against homesteading. I think homesteading is absolutely fantastic for those that do it, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Stick around. So if I'm looking at a paper map, there are certain things I want to be able to find in my area. I want these things. All right. I want to know where the major water sources are at and off the top of your head, depending on your location, you can probably name two or three already, but again, grander scope. If I have to leave the state and I have to go two states over, where are the major water sources? You know, streams, creeks, where am I going to be able to find water? It's specifically running water is what I'm looking for. Where are the gas stations at? You know, for very, you know, for various reasons, but if I'm bugging out in a vehicle, I need to know where the gas stations are at. And I'm looking for gas stations that are as close to roadways as possible. Uh, you know, I'm not huge on convenience, but during a bug in or excuse me, a bug out situation, you want to be in and out of these places, right? If they're still operational, I want to know where the sur, uh, surplus stores are at, the military supply stores, anything that is going to sell hunting and fishing equipment, this sort of thing. I want to know where they're at. Because again, assuming these places are open during the fall or during the initial collapse, if you will, or whatever event happens to be going on, I want to know where these places are at, right? Uh, emergency services stations, not because I want to run to the police department, not because I want to go to a National Guard center per se, but if there's a catastrophic event going on, I want to know at least where these places are at because you can look at it two different ways. You can say, hey, if I'm near a National Guard center, there's a chance it might be a little safer. But on the flip side, there are going to be more checkpoints and things like that. So if you're trying to avoid checkpoints, you also want to know where these places are at. Distribution facilities and warehouses, right? So if you have an Amazon, I don't know how many Amazon has. I know they have several Walmart, Costco, blah, 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 right? Where are these centers at? Is it something that I'm not encouraging you to do anything wrong here? I'm just saying, um, is it a target of opportunity during a, a complete and total collapse? You realize at some point it ain't coming back. You know, the society as we know it and everything's crashing in. Um, these places are just sitting there chock full of stuff. You know, at that point, I at least want to know where they're at. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm going to go straight to them and hit them or anything like that. Roads and routes in and out. Uh, I want to know the major highways and, and, and byways and interstates. But I also probably am going to be avoiding those. I want to know where they're at, but I understand that's where all the, the traffic and all of the most of the threats going to be. I'm looking at side roads and things. How can I get around checkpoints? How can I get around potential danger? And maps help you with this. Here's other stuff that I want to avoid. Shelters, you know, places where processing centers for 
undocumented Americans, things of this nature, because I think there's a huge threat there. The moment uh, the balloon goes up, so to speak, jails and prisons in terms of a total collapse, don't know what that's going to look like. Don't know what the contingency plan for jails and prisons is, but I don't want to risk it. I don't want to be near one of these places just in case, okay? Areas of concealment near near my home, right? I want to be aware of areas on the property where threats can get close in uh, to the old Ponderosa before they get spotted and things like this. Um, again, busy roadways, highways, freeways, because I'm trying to avoid the interstate and stuff like this uh, during a time of collapse. Choke points and potential choke points, that's getting us back to uh, being near police stations, being near National Guard centers. That's where a majority of your checkpoints are going to pop up. And then again, your heavily populated areas, which I don't want to be around anyway. Nuke facilities. Some of y'all are near nuke facilities. You've said as much in chat. You're like, I'm in the shadow of such and such plant. Okay, I don't want to be near one of these places during a collapse. I'm trying to get as far away from this place as I can. Uh, and the same goes with major chemical plants. Just because, you know, it, it's just, it's an assumed risk that you don't need to take during a collapse. All right. Uh, if you would, take a moment, hit thumbs up on the video or thumbs down and hit subscribe. Truly appreciate it. But yeah, I mean, you're a refugee at some point, whether you want to be or not. And, and again, we'll get into the homesteading in a minute, but there's always the possibility that you're going to have to pull up your tent stakes and become a refugee, right? And again, this is the knock I have against homesteading because you've put literally all of your eggs into one basket there. And you've got to be able to, you have to have a plan B, I think, even as a homesteader. So another thing about planning this way, you know, threats versus assets with paper maps, topography and things, the cost is very minimal. You know, you can pick up maps and things very, very cheap when you find them. You can print them off online if you have a printer at home. And it's going to cost you, literally cost you pennies to have this information. Some people do it to USB drive, but honestly... I would prefer to have a hard copy of everything, uh, if not two hard copies, or you know maybe laminate the maps if you have the ability uh, to do that. And I think it also puts you in the right kind of mindset, if that makes sense, um, because you begin to think long term. You know there are different kind of preppers, and we'll get into those in a minute. But but it really puts you into the mindset of thinking long term, thinking beyond four or five days and tornadoes and things like that. So again, I'm keeping an eye out when I'm looking at maps, major population areas. I don't want to be in one and I want to know where the major highways are because people, so you can look at any situation, whether it's a hurricane, whether something else is entirely going on. You take a look over in Europe right now, people trying to get out of certain countries and you look at the highways and they're log jammed. People are just trying to get out, right? And it just shuts everything down. So I don't want to be in a city center, but I also don't want to be anywhere near one of these roadways because there are going to be a lot of desperate people, a lot of threats on these roadways. Um, I want to know where the national and state parks are in the area, in the region, you know, a couple of states over this sort of thing. And major buildings that, that would provide cover and concealment. Now, again, I don't want a super busy building in, in a city center or something like this, but maybe there's something there. Maybe you've identified a building or a handful of buildings that would be a lot easier to secure and a lot easier to hold up in, so to speak, and would offer cover and concealment. Um, again, I just think this is this way of thinking is a little more advanced than storm preparedness. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with storm preparedness. I think that storms that's going to be the most common shtf and a lot of people are just storm preppers and that's okay it's certainly not for everyone but it is a long-term way of thinking um i want to avoid major transportation hubs where are the zombies going to be think about that you know step back for a second and say where are the non-preppers going to be during times of pure panic 
And you really don't have to think it over and mull it over too much because you can pull up instances where there have been hurricanes, there have been tornadoes, there have been events, and you can see, you can see the reaction by the zombies. Okay, the 19, when this thing was first announced, the zombies blitzed retail stores and they began hoarding certain things. Toilet paper, again, never understand that one. But they blitzed certain stores right certain stores like walmart because that's that's on the tip of everybody's brain right so you can prep accordingly and you can go to these little outside smaller mom and pop stores and things international stores maybe amish stores and be in and out long before the horde gets there uh so you want to know what the zombies are going to do and how they're going to react to major situations um avoiding any area that attracts the masses the golden horde, as I've heard it called here in the prepping community, right? I'm also going to try and avoid federal aid camps. I'm trying to dance around that one, folks. I'm trying to avoid the, you know, whether it's FEMA, Red Cross, whatever the case may be, I'm not interested. You know, a lot of your zombies are going to be there. They might be offering minimal assistance you know here's a cup of soup and and a couple of bottles of water but to me not only are there a lot of threats within that camp via zombies but i also am one i'm prone to not trust these agencies in the first place so i don't want to be inside one of these camps i'd rather make it on my own um and some people out there in the prepping community i get it they consider this hiding I see this in the comments sometimes, you know, you, you can't run and hide at some point. You've got to, you've got to face it. You can't run and hide. Well, you know, while I understand that, as I've said here on the channel before, some people are not in a, in a situation where they can, you know, some people are caring for elderly or they're caring for special needs or smaller children, maybe. And they're just not locked and loaded and going to jump into a trench. I mean, your situation, it's good on you that you're gung-ho and everything, but other people just want to avoid it. And everybody has a different situation, and we got to be realistic on that, okay? So getting into the major types of preppers, I think there are three. Now, there are a lot of subclasses here. You know, you got your boom-boom nuts and all this stuff, uh, your AK versus your ARs and all this. But I think when you boil it down, you've got three types of, of people that are prepping. Number one, and I probably the biggest group here, are the preppers that are just trying to survive the next storm. These preppers are not watching airplanes. They don't have tinfoil on the head. They're, they're not stockpiling two or three years worth of food. They're not doing anything full-blown. They just want to be able to survive for a couple of weeks, tops, uh, should they need to do that. And... You know, they're, they're paying more attention to their surroundings and things. They've got an emergency radio or two. They've got some jugged water at home and stuff like this. I think that's a vast majority of people. And I think a lot of those people probably came in because of the 19. You know, we saw a lot of people kicking in the door of the community. And that's cool. That's cool. Um, and maybe that's as far as they go with prepping. Maybe they go into one of the other two categories eventually. Second is homesteading. And again, nothing wrong with homesteading. The, the concept of homesteading at its core is the way to be, right? You're producing your own stuff. You're not dependent on anybody else. You know, live and let live, leave me be and let me be a producer. And again, in, in concept, in theory, that's a great way to do things. But during a collapse situation or during uh, a boots on the ground, you need to understand there's going to be no live and let live. People are going to want what you have and you're not going to be allowed to play farmer. Uh, you know, when the North Koreans show up with full armor on, you know what I'm saying? And number three, the survive the collapse crowd. And this is probably where I fall in at. So this is surviving the storm. And eventually that, that evolves for some people to, you realize, okay, it's not just the next storm. We're going to collapse. 
as a nation and, and things are about to get nasty and they're about to get gnarly. And so you're preparing beyond just a few weeks. You're not necessarily homesteading. I mean, yeah, we're, we're growing a few things and we do a lot of canning, but we're not homesteading. Homesteading is totally different. I think this is more about having contingency plans, having places to go should a threat arrive or, or be headed this way. Um, so homesteading, and, and you'll hear this a lot in the community, and I know it's a hot take and not everybody's going to like it, but uh, it is what it is. My, it's, it's my version of the truth. Y'all l- let me know what you think on this, but homesteading is not always the end game. You'll hear a lot of people saying homesteading should be the end game. That should be your final destination as a prepper. And again, in a perfect world, I think that that's an accurate statement. But then you have to factor a lot of other things in, okay? If if I'm living in Seattle, Washington, I don't have a lot of land downtown to homestead on, right? And I've got roots in Seattle. My family's in Seattle. Again, different situations for different folks. Uh, you know, maybe you got special needs, uh, children or even adults at home and or elderly, and you just can't leave, okay? You can't become Farmer Bill, in downtown Seattle. Again, you can grow some things. You can do some of the homesteading things, but at the end of the day, you don't have a lot of milk cows out back because you live in an apartment complex. I mean, homesteading is just not for everybody. Um, And the biggest thing, again, for me, because I'm in an area where we could potentially go full-blown homesteading, but Having studied the the rise of the Soviet Union, I saw what happened to farmers, and I saw what happened to people that were producing that had their own land. Um, they disappeared. You know, they they took big long rides on trucks, never to be seen again. So, I do think at some point, if there's a collapse or there's a a takeover, if you will, here in the United States of America, people are going to want what you have. And the more homesteading that you're doing, the more widespread it is, the more hands on deck you're going to need to to keep what you have. And that's just me being realistic. And that's I'm always bringing up the North Koreans, but it could be your own government. You know, it could be your neighbors. It could be your, you know, your town officials. Somebody is eventually going to want what you have and they're going to try and legalize it or rationalize it however they can. Um, So it is what it is. Uh, surviving the storm is the entry into prepping from there. I think you, you either prep to survive the storm and, and you kind of stay there. At least you're prepping at that point, right? At least you're prepared or you get into homesteading or you're prepping to survive the collapse. And again, I'm among that. I'm 100% anticipating the collapse here in the United States at some point. You look at the political climate, you look at our economy, our national debt. I mean, to me, there's no way around it. Um, I don't want to bug out. But I'm realistic in that we might have to, you know, and I think that that's something that because people say, no, no, this is the hill I'll die on. I'm, I'm never leaving the castle. Well, to me, that's not really a great plan. I understand the rationale behind it, but especially with a wife and kids. For me, there always has to be a plan B, plan C, and a plan D, and I don't consider it running. You know what I mean? If I have to bug out to keep my kid, my wife and kids safe, to me, that's okay. You know, bug out, live to fight another day, as they would say. Um, and if it comes to that, I want to have a plan, which is why I think, again, getting back to the maps and the topography and knowing the region that you're in, FEMA region and all this stuff, you know, and the pros and the cons and factoring all kinds of stuff in like the weather, the average temperature and stuff. I just feel like you can avoid uh, a lot of potential danger down the road by preparing today. You know what I mean? Even if you're homesteading, which is awesome, you need to have a plan B. Every every single ho- homesteader, this is another hot take. Let me know what you think. Uh, every homesteader needs to have a bug out plan. And I guarantee you a lot of homesteaders are going to be like, I'm never bugging out, but you don't know. 
You don't know until it comes down to it, okay? So have a bug out plan in place. That would be my advice. And the best part of, about all of this, folks, is it's free. Outside the cost of a few paper maps or printing some paper maps, something like that, it's free. You know, I don't know how, I haven't been to the library in a hot minute, but you might be able to go to the library and get this stuff printed off for free or for very, very cheap. I'm not sure. But look into it. It's it's an extremely cheap and or free prep. Um, planning and, and having a contingency plan just in case doesn't really cost much money, but it can save you a lot, a lot of grief on the backside. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Take care. God bless.